Well, I think it's fair to say the press botched its coverage of the 2016 election. Afterward, the press tried to blame its failure on a glut of fake news and then widely proceeded to publicize a bunch of bogus stories itself. Small wonder then that a recent Emerson College poll found that the public trusts the Trump administration's honesty substantially more than it trusts the media. One person who's supposed to be a watchdog over all this is Eric Wempel. He's a media reporter for The Washington Post, and he joins us tonight. Eric, thanks a lot for coming on. Oh, pleasure. So, I read your, I'm in the media, I read your column, I read The Washington Post, I read it most of my life. And in the past couple of months, I've seen a lot of stories, including some from you, accusing people of basically carrying water for the Russian government. And that's, the Russian government's in the news today. So I thought I would ask you about something I've wondered about for a long time, which is that The Washington Post, for years, many years, has literally carried paid propaganda from the Russian government, a, a section called Russia Behind the Headlines. It looks like newsprint. It's designed to fool readers into thinking it's real. And it's pure propaganda paid for, distributed by the Russian government with stories like, you know, we're doing a great job in Crimea. Why have you never written about that? How can you attack others when you don't know that your own paper makes money from taking propaganda from the Russian government? You know, I think that's a really good question. Um, and. Uh, I wish you had told me you wanted to talk about this, but no, those inserts are in, uh, interesting. Um, I mean, they are. Well, why part didn't of, you write about them? Uh, that's a good question. I think you know I got a lot to write about, but I, you know, I am interested in that topic, and I, I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, but it's I your think, own but, paper. But hold on, hold on. You, I mean, you cover you the me media. <laughs> I of do course, cover the yeah, media. I'm just interested. I do cover the media, um, and yeah. I believe there are several newspapers that do run these inserts. I think China has one as well. Um, right, that's right. They are what's known as native advertising, where there are um, signs to the reader that this is not your, you know, your approved uh, journalism. And I think, do think that people, subscribers to the Washington Post and the New York Times and other places that run these things, can differentiate between the news that is in the paper proper and the news that is in uh, the Russia, China, so on and so forth, insert. That's really uh, your answer? Because they're, well, I would say two things. One, I remember a very famous piece that you did attacking Politico for running native advertising, mm -hmm. Mike Allen in particular, and you were all spun up into moral outrage over native advertising. And you never noted, again, that the Russian government is printing something in your paper designed to fool people, filled with the crudest kind of propaganda, but you didn't even notice it somehow. But I'm not surprised. Because in case after case, you fail to cover your own paper running fake or misleading things. And I'll, I'll just give you a couple of examples in case you didn't see them. On February well, 14th, hold on, hold on, hold Washington. On. Yeah, hold on, uh, Mr. Carlson. I need to back you up there on that, uh, back up there on that premise. The thing that I wrote about Mike Allen was a different case altogether. Um, it was native a headline that said, it said native advertising pioneer. That was a cheeky way of saying that he was folding endorsements of companies and so on and so forth into the very text of his newsletter. There was no attempt whatsoever to differentiate that um, from, his, uh, from advertising. They had sponsors in that newsletter, and so okay. I reject the premise 100%. But you know, I. It, but you still can't answer why your paper intentionally tries to fool readers into believing that Russian propaganda is news, and that you haven't bothered to cover it. And no. your job is to cover the media. I think that's what it says in your column. But again, that's February fourth, your that's paper true. reports that Steve Bannon. It is true. Steve Bannon drives over to the Department of Homeland Security to advocate for Trump's executive orders. The, the story turns out to be totally false. It didn't happen. And by the way, your reporters never even called the White House to ask. That's fine. We all make mistakes. You didn't cover it. You didn't cover on January 26th when the State Department fired its entire management team. So said your headline. Did, the story turned out to be totally a crock. You didn't did you, cover that. Did, Why don't did, you cover your own did, paper's shortcomings is the um, question. I think, I think you missed something, Mr. Carlson. Uh, would you look back? I believe it was in January as well. The Post reported something that wasn't quite straight about, um, I believe it was a power uh, plant up in Vermont. I wrote a very yeah. hard-hitting piece about that oh. situation. And if you no, go you back did. to it, No, you didn't. Me. I read the piece. You want to read what you read? What you wrote? By the way, your, two of your reporters reported that the Russian government had broken into and hacked the U.S. electricity grid. They were wrong. You said they were wrong. You never bothered to talk to your own reporters, presumably in the same newsroom that you're in. And here's did how you, you not, ended the piece. You not read my, did you not read my post on that matter? I, not only did I read your post, no, you, I just reread it about 10 minutes ago, and you did not interview those reporters in there. You said that the paper I wouldn't talk to you. I interviewed, I pushed really? for an interview with uh, editor Marty Barron. 
They look. The story the was very who wrote the piece? critical of the Washington Post, and I would know. Was too. it? I would was know it? Because here's the last Here, line, wait, wait, and I'm one quoting. Second. Wait one second, Mr. Carlson. Wait one <laughs> second, okay? And hey. yeah, there's a high pitched yeah. laugh. I, I appreciate the high pitched laugh. Anyway, uh -huh. I appreciate anyway, your not, there uh, failing to give few, me an answer. What's the answer? All right, there, there are few, if any, news organizations that allow their in-house media reporter to do as much coverage of their own shop as Fred Hyatt and Marty Baron allow me to do. And I'll cite you a few examples. A year then you two, just declined to do it? Is that Hold what you're on, saying? They allow me. you, but you, you out excuse of cowardice, me. refuse to? Like, what are you saying? I did a story about, I don't know how many months ago, about the failure of the Washington Post to get diverse um, uh, uh, professionals in the higher ranks of the paper. I also broke the story within wow, the Washington Post. Wow, good for you. But you're not answering my Thank questions you. about me, why you did these are real stories. No, they're not no, about no, diversity in your newsroom. I and am you answering didn't you. interview the no, reporters no. who wrote the story. And then you end with this. The missteps mar an otherwise spectacular run for the Post. Now, when you write something that brown nosy, do you feel guilt? No. Do you finish, feel like I'm doing finish, my job as a hard-hitting me. media reporter? Fin a spectacular finish, run of my finish. own publication, my own employers? Finish the post, Mr. Carlson. Read till the end, please. That's actually the no, last, that's the end of it. The and then end. you go on. Read the entire last paragraph, please, for me. Oh, is that, is that where you interview the editor who assigned the piece, the reporters who screwed it up? You get to the no, question of how it happened. Oh, that look, wasn't I in the piece. I don't have it in front of me. Because you were afraid to track it down because you work there. Yeah. No. And I will continue. I also broke at the Washington Post the story of how, this is a couple of years ago, a few years ago, the advertising side of the paper was putting the arm on the magazine to push content in a certain direction. You tell was it Russian me, propaganda? Oh, you missed that you story. Tell, you well, you're, tell you're, you're me, quite the sleuth, aren't you? you? Tell it's actually me, in the paper okay, when you open it up Mr. in the middle of okay. it. Mr. Carlson, did you do anything <laughs> on Brett Baer's report uh -huh. that, that there would be an <laughs> FBI investigation related to the Clinton Foundation? What did uh -huh. you say? No, but I think, I think that you Hold did. On. Actually, Hold Eric, no, no, I think that talk. you did. Let me talk. I'm, let I'm me not talk. the self-described media reporter. No, I'm just let me a, talk. Uh, oh, I don't cover the media. About, you do. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you cover media every single day. I watch you. Ooh, you are Everybody okay. on Fox News covers no, the media. No, I think that's your, this that's, is that's the your job, Eric. This is the of Fox News. Listen, right. Mr. Carlson, I want to ask you. Well, you would know because you're a little obsessive about Fox News, I notice. You've covered Fox News in the last 10 months 23 mm -hmm. times more than MSNBC. And right. look, you've got a political agenda. You're a lefty. No, no. You're angry about politics. I get it. But no, here's my no. question to you. Does Jeff Bezos, who owns your paper, does Marty Baron, who edits it, do they ever call you and say, you know, good job, Eric. You're doing a real good job as a media critic. Do they ever tell you? I'm just in a sincere question. Do they ever say that to you? Let me finish with an earlier point that you just seemed to steamroll me on. But what did you say when Brett well, Pear reported falsely that there would be an FBI indictment, there would be a federal indictment related to the Clinton Foundation one week before the election against Donald Trump. Yeah. What did you okay. say about that? <laughs> As a media reporter, talk, what did we'll Howard have to go Trump, back to the tape. So you're saying, look, say here, about that? Eric, look, I get it. You can't answer the question. So you're saying I that I somehow have an obligation to be a media reporter. But I'm not a media reporter, and you are. And you get a lot of mileage out of it. I'm Mr. Media Reporter. I'm brave. They right. give me all this rope, and I can do whatever I want. But you don't. And instead, do. you single-mindedly pursue do. your political agenda. And my question is, please answer it. Does the owner of your paper, Jeff Bezos, who runs Amazon, does he ever call you and say, good job? Or does Marty Barron ever say, you're doing what we want you to do? Are, are you acting on their instruction? Do they notice what you're doing? What do they think of it? My direct boss is Fred Hyatt. Uh, I do not Does he say, directly. good job, I, Eric Wemple? Like, really insightful. Does he ever I, say that? I'm, I I'm wondering. I, I wouldn't quote him as that, and I don't appreciate the puerile angle of uh, inquiry here. It's not puerile. It's sincere, say, because I don't see you as a media critic. I see you as a political hack acting out his political beliefs on paper with the cover of media criticism. I'm just a media critic. No, I'm, and everyone who reads you knows that. And I'm wondering, if, does your, do your editors know that? Do they read it and say, you know, you're really covering the media straight? Do they think that? I, I, I believe I do cover the media straight. Today, for example, do you did really you see what that? I wrote today? I questioned the New York Times as, as to how they gave a public wow. account of a reporter. You know, look. Oh, you, you questioned you your competitor. That's very brave. But do you ever right. question yourself? Do you ever question I, Mr. your own Mr. Carlson, paper? Mr. Carlson. I don't Mr. think Carlson, you do very I much. Will, I will put the Washington Post's, in the freedom that I have, and the times that I have uh -huh. criticized my own paper against yeah. okay. anyone we, in this industry. 
Okay. Okay. I'm starting and, to feel bad. And, look, the point look, is just actually, you have the freedom, and I, and I think it's great. You should just use it to do something useful, like reporting on Russian propaganda in your own paper. We're out of time. Eric, it's great to see you. Thanks a lot for, for coming time. on. And I, okay. of course, I hope you'll come back.